Oh, hey, hello there. How's it going, fellow friends? And welcome back to me doing a reaction video that won't be... It won't get anywhere near as many views as my Doom one, but it'll be it'll be infinitely more easy to watch because I won't be pausing the video I'm supposed to be reacting to every five seconds like I did in that previous one. That was a mistake, and I caught a lot of shit for it. Rightfully so. It was, it must, it's, watching it back, I was like, how can... This is ridiculous. So, let me do this properly. Let me hit that. Let me hit that. Let me hit this. There we go. So, the Red Dead Redemption 2 gameplay, official gameplay video part 2. Now, I'm not, like, super excited about this because although I'm fucking ready for Red Dead Redemption 2, you know me and trailers. Trailers in general just kind of don't really get me excited anymore. Especially, like, you know, with the GTA 5 trailers, they were like, hey, team up with your friends and tackle a heist. And then a year after the game came out, 18 months after that trailer came out, they finally released heists. So everything they show in the trailer might not be all in the game from day one. And that's just something I think about when I'm watching this sort of thing. Plus, I knew the second I realized how amazing Red Dead Redemption 1 was, that was when I knew I was buying Red Dead Redemption 2. I was like, I currently owe uh, Rockstar £50. I just need them to make the game and then, and then the money is theirs. So I don't need a trailer to sell me on a game or to generate hype. I am hyped enough. But let's do this. Let's let let's see what's going on. Okay, so yeah, I guess just I guess we're just gonna hit play. I don't care that I'm a couple of days late with this review. Who gives a fuck? So it looks pretty good. It's probably running on a PS4 Pro though, so it probably won't look this good uh, when I play it on my PS4. It does look nice though. Still only 30 frames a second, but you know what? I can live with it. Oh, it's an epic tale. Nice. Arthur! That snow is good. That's some good ass snow. Oh no, watch out! He got, he got one-upped. He lost the upper hand. Gameplay, part two. All right, let's do this. Okay, so you can climb through windows and slide down mud without getting your... I don't know if that was mud, actually. That was kind of foolish. Cap him. Rub that damn train. But not until a year after the game comes out. Oh, heists. That's a dirty word around GTA ways. Mute. Hold up a store. Burgle a house or go loan sharking. Here for money. Or do all of it. Or you can simply go off and explore alone. If you're feeling brave enough. The countryside, towns, and frontier are full of rival gangs and outlaws. Each different, but all of them deadly. Capped. How's that score you stole off us? Which one? In this <laughs> Which world, one? Lawmen are cunning. It's that guy from the first game, I think. Outlaws or investigating a crime scene. Mother have mercy. Now, I'm not a fellow to pass a quick judgment, but I know you don't hire a saint to catch a sinner. He's not wearing wearing. He had a full beard earlier. Now he doesn't. Can you grow a beard in this game? That would be cool. Must always be prepared to defend himself against whatever. Let's face it. You probably just go to a hairdresser's and they put a beard on you. Savage. Cat. Cat. And will progress in stages, allowing you to slow time. It looks exactly. It looks exactly the same though. What's what's been expanded? I've always wanted to know where to shoot a human to do the most damage. I'm glad I'm glad they tell us the critical hit points. Head, heart, balls. You can of course choose what to wear, ride, eat. Wow, that and which guns to carry. That was awful. Shave, bathe, or don't. It's up to you. See that's cool. Red Dead Redemption 2 is full of things to do. So yeah, so you can grow a beard by the looks of it. That's pretty cool. Oh yay, fishing. Oh, poker though. Throw the sarcasm away for the poker. It is a beautiful looking game. Oh look, a new weird game to learn. And that stupid knife game that isn't fun to play. And people to meet. 
Hey, stop it, you two. You can get into raucous altercations. He's getting capped, double teamed. Taking and he shot. took care of it. Chase down he went to see a show. Fight a duel. Oh, you love doing jewels in Red Dead Redemption. This is nasty country. Shut up. Behavior has consequences, and people will remember you and your actions. Hopefully. Yeah, let's have a good versus evil system. Not enough games have that these days. First person mode is back, baby. From GTA. Hopefully it's a lot better, because in GTA it was really more of a novelty than anything else. It was much easier to play the game in third person. Who's that badass? Ooh, new cinematic cameras. I mean... I guess I did use the cinematic cameras in GTA 5 sometimes. Only sometimes, though. Fuck off! That's what he was saying. Fuck off. Where's my boy John Marston, though? October 26th. That's this month! Pre-order now. Never. This video was captured entirely from in-game footage. Yeah. Probably on a PS4 Pro. Or on a PC. I know the game isn't coming out on PC, but they like to show PC quality stuff. Look at all this random shit. So, yeah. I don't know why I smallerized it. Let's embiggen it again. Let's go back. Let's go back a little bit. Let's hit on some talking points. So, this is... Right. So, people were making a big deal recently about how uh, Rockstar were like, Hey, our, our horses have testicles. Which isn't something particularly new, I don't think. But what is new is that their testicles shrink and enlarge, I guess. Depending on the environment you're in. So, if you go up into the cold mountains, the horse balls will shrink. And everyone's like, oh, that's so crazy. What, what attention to detail they put in. And it's like, yeah, but... Like, it's just marketing, isn't it? They just... They're like, let's tell people we got this crazy thing involving testicles in our game. And then people will talk about it. And it worked. But, like, it's, it, it's not like that level of detail is going to be spread out across the whole game. Case in point, in this opening scene, this guy fighting Arthur Morgan, right? The blonde guy. He's on top of Arthur Morgan like this, right? Looking down. Look at his hair. His hair isn't, isn't hanging. Or moving at all. It's just like a solid plastic thing that is stuck to his head that never moves. That's the first thing I noticed when I saw this. I was like, that is awful. The hair doesn't move. I've Tekken Tag Tournament on the... No. I think Tekken 3, maybe, had had some hair moving on the PS1. It's like, hair moving should be... A th if you're going to boast about horse testicles shrinking in the in the weather, get characters' hair to move when, they, when, they're, when they're fighting like this. That's just unacceptable. <laughs> Throw him off. There we go. What was the... Uh, where's my... I lost my cursor then, like an absolute champ. Look at that. I love it when it doesn't show me the uh, the the preview. Love it. Seems to be seems to be completely at random as well. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna skip forward. So yeah, they're like, okay, this is our most ambitious open world yet. Yep, that's what you say every time, and I'm sure it's true. I heard today. Freshly today, I heard that the map for Red Dead Redemption 2 will contain the entire map from Red Dead Redemption 1. I don't believe it yet, but that sounds pretty cool. Can you go to Mexico? You must do if it's the, if it's the entire map. That would be kind of cool. Although, I mean, look, I like big open world games, but, you know, GTA V's open world was borderline too big. Borderline. Because in the early days of the game, when you don't have a plane or anything, you're like, oh, for fuck's sake, I've got to drive to the top of the map. It's miles away. It would take ages. Right, so yeah, this bit. So he's just walking along. He's like, don't mind me. Oh shit, some guy just burst out of there. Boom, and he shoots one of them. So this is like, it looks, he's following a woman into town. So it looks like this might be the tail end of a quest that kind of dovetails into the beginning of a new quest. So they don't give you enough information. But what it's, what I'm guessing is, these two guys came, came tumbling out of the door. Arthur shoots that, the bad guy, I guess. And then someone who obviously knows him turns around and goes, Arthur. And then it's probably going to be like, come back later, I got a job for you. And then you finish the carrying, uh, following the woman to wherever you're going. That might be what happens. Or maybe he'll be like, while you're here, here's my quest. Carry on with your current quest. You know, that would be cool. My, another question, though, is what happens if you shoot the guy that goes, Arthur? Can you shoot him? Because he looks like a quest giver. He's obviously an important character, obviously. We know nothing of him. But, like, you know, he, he's probably a quest giver. Can you kill him? Maybe. I mean, one thing I do like that they mentioned in this trailer that uh, your actions have consequences and choices matter and all that bullshit. And that's great because GTA 5 sort of had a little bit of elements of um, 
of being able to make decisions and have them ha have consequences like spoilers at the end of GTA 5 story you can choose as as Franklin you can choose to either kill Trevor kill Michael or let them both live and if you kill Michael or Trevor then you can't then they're dead you can't use them if you want to carry on playing and there's there's certain decisions you can make throughout the game but they're largely inconsequential this seems like it's got an honor system like uh, the first Red Dead Redemption had an honor system where you could be a hero or an outlaw or something like that and um whenever i play a game like that i my, my main character or playthrough always plays the good guy then i'll play as the bad guy and then who knows what i'll do on my third go so i'm interested can you can you just straight up kill that guy the one that says arthur and then that just cuts you off from doing that quest and maybe subsequent quests who knows too many questions uh, okay some guy some guy looks like he's giving it like that on the bridge there he's like nice nice shot arthur this, oh, this, this is so good. Look at the way, look at the, de t talking about details and me, oh, the hair doesn't move. Oh, oh. Look at the fucking, look at the way the snow moves under his feet when he's walking here. Look at that. Look at that. Now, I haven't played Horizon Zero Dawn, but I've seen people play it, and it looks like that, that might be the first game I ever saw that had snow that moved realistically like that as you walk through it. It's, it's not just... It's not just like a, a, a flat texture that you walk on as if it was concrete and then you look down and you might see like a dark imprint. It's like it's got substance and as you walk it moves out the way and stuff. Like that's probably the most realistic snow I've ever seen. Which is good. And I'm sure that horse's balls are quite small right now. So yeah, there he is with a beard. So I, later on they say, oh, you know, you can bathe and shave or not. So I'm guessing if you don't shave, you just grow like a massive beard. That's pretty cool. That's an assumption. But it's it's what the trailer leads me to believe. So that's pretty cool. I like that. Oh yeah. So there's this bit where the guy knocks him over. He's like, "I got you now, boy." Uh, yep. Red Dead Redemption Two gameplay trailer. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. So this bit. Yeah. So he he doesn't slide down some. I don't know why I thought it was mud. He clearly slides down some sort of roof. All of adventures and experiences. Yeah. So he so it looks like. Adventure. So he climbs out of that window. See, what it looks like on the face of it is that he's just traversing the 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 area and then he he falls off that roof and then it just happens to coincide with this story mission that was about to happen. It's all organic. But it kind of looks like the whole thing is a cutscene from the moment he starts climbing through the window because the camera's following him as he's sliding down the thing and, th and then it transitions from that into seeing these guys that turn up. ...and experiences that you discover naturally. These guys here. So, like, when I first saw that, it gave me the impression that this quest could be triggered, like, at any time. Like, maybe these guys are just wandering around, and, and at this moment he found them. But now I've seen it on replay, it does seem like it's whole... It does seem like it's scripted. Um, but, like, we don't know. It sounds like they might... Like, this is what I love about Rockstar Games. They know how to make a fucking sequel. And I know this isn't... This isn't a sequel to GTA, but I class Red Dead Redemption as a GTA game. It's my second favorite GTA game. Because it's GTA in the Wild West. It just is. So, I always compare this to GTA, and they make... Rockstar know how to make sequels. Almost every time they make a sequel, it's more of the same, but bigger and better. And you can tell in, in GTA 5, they took cues from what they learned in Red Dead. And in Red Dead, they took cues from what they learned in GTA 4. So like in, in GTA 4, it had a very basic online system. And then the, the one in Red Dead Redemption was basically that online system, but cranked up to 11. And you could like form a, uh, form a posse and like do small little missions and shit like that. And then they obviously took that, cranked that up to 11, and you've got GTA Online from GTA 5. So they're probably going to take everything they learned from GTA Online, which is how to make fucking money by making people grind. That makes them want to not grind, so then they spend money. Um, and crank that up to 11 for this. Who knows what could happen. Um, but as far as the single player goes, it it seems like... That's that's where I was going with this. In GTA 5, you've got the, uh, the random strangers and freaks. And you had them in GTA 4, actually. In fact, that's probably where they started. There was a couple of people dotted around the map, and you could, you could stop and speak to them, and there'd be a little side mission. Then they turned that up to 11 with GTA, with Red Dead Redemption, where they actually made them like sort of more fleshed out, longer quests. And some of them had multiple uh, quests in their quest line. And then in GTA 5, they turned it up even more, where like you could meet these strangers and freaks as some people would be like oh thanks for returning my bike and then you'd get no reward but then a week later this guy goes hey i'm the guy whose bike you found and got back i'm like super rich here's a load of money 
and uh, or like uh, you could pick up Packy from GTA 4 and if you help him with his little mission help him get away from the from the uh, place that he's robbing you can ha have him join your heist crew in the story in the single player so they've been increasing this the, like random encounter uh, system that they've had since GTA 4 so it looks like they've taken that and cranked it up to 11 for this game it's going to be interesting oh, it's going to be interesting so yep there he is he's like what am I going to do oh wait I've got dead eye dead 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 yeah, Dead Eye. They're like Dead Eye has been expanded. Has it? Looks exactly the same to me. This bit's cool. It, they were like, "We're gonna rob this motherfucking train, bitch," and then yeah, you go on and rob the train. Okay, so I, I imagine that's gonna ha I imagine that's gonna be like the heists in GTA V uh, in the single player, where you've got like you know the setup missions, and then you you do it. But maybe they don't have setup missions. I'm sure they'll probably have something like we need to steal the train routes or something. So I imagine it's just gonna be heist. Cranked up to 11, because that's what Rockstar do. Um, so that's going to be good, because the heists in the single player on, on GTA 5 were some of the highlights of the front of, of the, uh, not the franchise, of the game, in my opinion. They was, especially the first, the first time I did a heist, the first time I did the jewelry store heist, my heart was pounding, because it was so tense, and, you know, we'd, we'd set up plans and all this shit, and, like, that was a true thrill, and that was, uh, and that was one of the few true thrills I got out of that game. So hopefully this is going to be like that. Got some guy in crowd control by the looks of it. You got what I can only assume are prostitutes singing in the back of his wagon. He's like, let's do this, ladies. Probably not prostitutes. They're probably it's probably wildly disrespectful to just assume they're prostitutes. But they're probably prostitutes, let's face it. Okay, so then yep, we got this bit. This bit reminded me very much of the GTA online trailer because of just the way it's structured. You've got the woman, I think it might even be the same woman, listing these things you can do. They're like you can you can team up with friends, rob a convenience store, tackle a heist, and they've done this exact same structure here. They're like you can rob, uh, fucking, you know, carriages. You can do this. You can do a heist. You can do this, and it's just like, it just it just reminds me that we didn't get heists for a whole year after the game came out on or a coach. like this bit. Hold up a store, burgle a house, or go loan sharking. It is weird that they say all these things like you can do this or this or this. It's like you know most people are gonna do all of it. He's like, hey, I'm gonna burgle your house, bitch. Oh no, he's loan sharking. Like an asshole. Okay. So yep, you got your beautiful vistas. Beautiful vistas. The cloud on the right looks stands out like it shouldn't really be there. But yeah, that's a beautiful vista. Probably on a PS4 Pro. Probably won't look like that on, on my version when I get it. But still, it's gonna be beautiful. Look, if I was a graphics whore, like, if it, I've been saying this to people recently, they're like, oh, I don't like, mm, the graphics on the Xbox One version of this game don't quite look quite as good as the PS4 Pro version, but I've got an Xbox One, and I don't have a, P I sh I'm thinking about buying a PS4 Pro, just to, because it looks a bit better, and I'm like, look, if you really gave a shit about graphics, you would game on PC, wouldn't you? Yes, and I say this as a console purist, I only play on consoles, but if you really give a shit about graphics, you'd play on PC. So instead of buying a PS4, Either just buy the game and save yourself some money and just play it on your Xbox. Can't be that much difference. Or buy a PC. That's my advice. So yeah, this bit, she's like, oh yeah, you know, go out on your own if you dare. And I'm like, I've played Red Dead Redemption. I've played GTA. I'm sure it's not going to be that hard. Although saying that, I remember the, the cops on GTA 4 were like a pushover. And then the cops on GTA 5 were like, they take no fucking shit. So maybe, you know, maybe it is truly dangerous when you go out in the, in the Wild West. Although I find it hard to think that it will be when you have Deadeye. So you just pull up on your horse and there's these guys go, we're going to block the road. And then you just slow down time and go, dead, dead. Now I'm going to rob them. <laughs> so I don't see the threat. Now bears, they were the threat in Red Dead Redemption 1. Fuck me. If you didn't have like the most mentalist of shotgun in your hands when a bear turned up, you're probably fucked. So yeah, some guy getting capped. Yeah, see, I like that. This is for some reason this this didn't even cross my mind with the rival gangs and outlaws because I I it was no, it was it was obvious that you were gonna be in Dutch's gang once they released the first uh, teaser trailer like a year ago or whatever it was. Everyone was like, okay, it's gonna be a prequel and you're gonna be in Dutch's gang. Those are pretty much guaranteed, and they were guaranteed. But it didn't occur. So I was thinking, okay, so you're gonna be like part of this gang and you're going to be like bad guys and all this shit it didn't once occur to me there might be other gangs that you might have to deal with and i was like ah oh, okay cool i like that and i don't like it i kind of don't like it because it's like 
I thought Dutch's gang was was like known for being infamous. So I I guess you could play as an infamous gang doing bad things. I guess you could do that. But I don't know. I'm going to play doing good things and is is killing all the rival gangs going to make you good guys or bad guys? I assume it make you good guys because you're thinning out the bad guys. I don't fucking know. Too much remains to be seen. Got some sort of fur-wearing Mexican guy. He's going to go down without a fight like this guy. Capped. Boom. So yeah, that looks like it's probably not but tell me that doesn't look like Armadillo from the first game. Like, you're stood... This is the sheriff's office. And you're looking out of it. There's the saloon straight there. And then to the right of there is, like, the general store and shit. To me, that looks like Armadillo. Which it could be if, if the rumour that the map of Red Dead 2 is going to contain the map of Red Dead 1 in it. That could be Armadillo. I did like me some Armadillo. How's that score, you stole? I spent so much time there playing poker. It was crazy. So who have we got here? People I don't recognize. How's that score you stole from us? Which one? Which <laughs> one? Okay. So yeah. I don't know if this... See that guy on the left? Is that the marshal from the first game? Was he a marshal? I can't remember. I'm not up on the lore and the history of Red Dead Redemption 2. It's been a long time since I played it. But I think that's the guy that, like... Arrested you? At the beginning of the first game, you're already arrested, but you know what I mean. Is that him? Who knows? Is it? It kind of looks like him, but this game's set, what, 20 years before the other one? Maybe the guy on the right is him. Who knows? Okay, so yep, hiding. Unknown suspect. Up there in the corner where it says wanted level. So, See, they didn't mention an expansion on the wanted system. Hopefully they have. It was, it was alright in the first game, but it was basically a case of just shoot everyone until they are all dead. Or just outrun them. But I didn't usually have to bother with that, because I was a good guy. I was like, oh, there's a guy getting away. Shoot him in the leg with a pistol, and now to get in with my lasso. Oh, shit, I'm getting flashbacks of lassoing people. Putting them on my horse. Shit. There's a reason I said Red Dead Redemption 2, uh, Red Dead Redemption, the single player, was a perfect 10 out of 10. So, yeah, hiding, mechanics, and search, so... A, some sort of crime scene investigation, apparently, which I imagine will consist of, hmm, yeah, he's been shot all right. I see horse tracks. Let's follow him. That's probably what it's going to be. I can't see him being like an actual sleuth. But who knows? I know nothing about Arthur Morgan. I mean, I was a bit disappointed when I found out you weren't going to play as John Marston, but like, I, I thought you were going to play as a young John Marston in Dutch's gang. But I guess it makes sense that you don't play as him, <sighs> even though he's awesome. I'm curious to know if they got the same voice actor to come back to voice him, because I... I think I read somewhere that the guy that did the voice of John Marston left voice acting after he did that game, and he was like, yeah, I'm done. I don't want to do it anymore. I don't know why. So yeah, some sort of nighttime horse robbery. I wonder what the state of the horse's testicles are in that scenario. So yeah, here he is, walking. Getting into a fight. Booyah! Stabbed him right in the heart. Let's have some slow-mo. I can't do slow-mo. Where, where's the slow-mo? Nope. That's not what I want. You can watch it in 4K. Ha! <laughs> Speed. 0 0.25. Is that too slow? Booyah! I just want to see the expressions and shit. See if they... See what they look like. Okay, so he didn't really have an expression. The guy that just got stabbed. He was just like... Ah! And, uh, I don't know where Arthur's looking, but he did seem to, his expression did seem to change a little bit. That's the kind of detail I like. Like in, uh, in Metal Gear Solid 2, it's, it's such a subtle thing that you almost never see it most of the time. You'll be, like, hidden behind a corner or whatever, and you're looking around the corner. And if, as soon as the guards see, I don't know if it works with Raiden, but I know it works with Snake. As soon as the guards see you, and it makes that ring noise, and you go into alert phase, just for a second, his face goes like, ah, like that. And I, I never, I played that game and com totally completed it, and never knew that happened until someone pointed it out a few years ago. And I was like, oh yeah, like that's the kind of, that's the kind of detail that's all the way throughout the games that Kojima does. And... Rockstar do tend to do that sort of detail. Unless it comes to hair. They don't bother doing that. Nope, don't play. I've confused it. My laptop, she is slow and old. 
Okay, play. Right, now pause. There we go. So, let's see. Skip forward a little bit. Right, so here we go. Deadeye. As I was saying earlier, I'm so... I'm so glad that there's a stage of Deadeye that you can unlock where it goes, Shoot here! Because I didn't know shooting him in the head would be the optimal place. Maybe there's enemies in the game that have armor? And then you need the, uh... You need that Deadeye to say, shoot them here. But, I don't know. Allowing you to slow time. It seems... So very pointless. It, it would be like having a glass of water and writing lips go here on the top. Like, yeah, we know. I know what I'm doing. Targets. Okay, yep, that looks the same as always. Right. So basically, if you shoot him anywhere from the waist up, it's going to be a critical hit. Obviously, because he's a human being. That's, that's generally how it works. I don't, I don't see Dead Eye Mode as being, other than seeing pointless, shut up Siri, other than seeing pointless, seemingly pointless uh, targets on their body, I don't see any difference at all between Dead Eye in this and Dead Eye in the other game, which strikes, it, which strikes me as odd when they make a deal, when they make a point of saying, Dead Eye has been expanded. Has it? I do like, I love, I don't think they show it in this trailer, but I love the way in the previous trailer when he like got thrown into the mud, the mud just like, his clothes got all muddy and dirty and shit like instantly. That's, that's, I like that How sort of thing. When you use it is up to you. <laughs> Shotgun and a, and a revolver. That's pretty cool. It also looks like a cutscene. So can you do that while you're playing? Maybe. Your ex right, so he's wandering around. I'm just looking for, looking for little details I might have missed. Although I'm probably going to, Actually, no, I won't. I was thinking about watching one of those videos where it's like, we're going to go through it frame by frame and find all the details, but it's like, no, I don't care. I'm just going to buy the game. Experience is defined by the choices and decisions you make for Arthur. See, he's, he's a villain with a heart of gold. You, you can, of course, choose what to wear, ride, eat. Yeah, this I thought was awful as well. In line with, with the hair not moving. Look at the bowl, right? You'd think if you went to pick up a bowl of stew... It would have certain physics, like, you wouldn't just pick it up as if it's empty, which is how he does it. He picks it up like it weighs nothing, like they got someone to motion capture picking up an empty bowl. What they should have done is given the guy doing the motion capture a bowl with water in it, so he could, like, actually... Because when you pick it up and move it as fast... Just, just watch, and none of the contents in the bowl actually move. Like, watch. Ride. Eat. Like, it just looks... It looks so bad. It looks just like a flat texture that doesn't move. And it's like, if you're gonna if you're gonna put a feature in where you can eat food, at least make it not look like not food. That that was kinda like Dreamcast level. And I've seen good food in games. I've played Final Fantasy XV. You've seen the the food in that game? It's good. You know, when he puts a bowl down, you see the liquid move as it would if he put the bowl down in that manner. That's what that's what I expect from a game developer known for details in their games. That's what I expect. I'm not saying, oh, it's Game Breaker. Of course not. But it is a shame when you're playing a game. I mean, look at, the, look at the, like, the hair on his wrist and shit. Like, the, the, there's a lot of detail in this game. And then when you see something that just obviously doesn't look anything close to real, it just pulls you out of the fantasy. God damn it. And which guns to carry? Shave, bathe, or don't. Like, those, those bubbles don't look good either. They just look like a mesh, like a spider web or something. But yeah, I like this. Bathe, but don't shave. Got to see how long the beard can get. That'll be interesting. And then, you know, he's like, "I'm, I'm still dirty, motherfuckers." Rowing a, 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 a canoe. Probably not something I'll do that often. Hey, it's those things that you only ever see in cartoons. Don't even know what they're called. That's how little you see them in real life. Hand pump trains. Maybe, fishing. I hope there's no trophy to that, uh, tied to that, but there obviously fucking will be. Fishing. If fishing in real life is half as boring as it is in video games, and I'm expecting it to be at least time, ten times more boring than it is in video games, then I'll probably never do it. That said, one day I may try it and go, you know what, I get it now. Fishing is cool, but no. It just seems incredibly boring to me. So, of course, poker, naturally, awesome. I look, I've always said the poker in... Red Dead Redemption 1 was so good, they could have just sold that as its own game. 
expand it a little bit, you know. But yeah, the poker in that was great. So I'm looking forward to the poker in this. So drinking again, just like in GTA, it's kind of pretty pointless. Like you walk up to the bar, you press right, and he goes, oh, I've had a shot. There you go. It was worth animating that. Oh, but if you have enough of them, your vision goes wobbly and it's hard to control your character. Yeah, that was a novelty in 2001 in the, on the first Fable game when you could get drunk. That was a novelty. I I will try it in Red Dead Redemption 2. I'll have a drink and then have another one and have another one. And I'll probably go, oh yeah, it's just like getting drunk in GTA 5. Pointless. But I could be wrong. This is this, See, this is what I like. I hope I'm wrong. I could be wrong. It's tiring. Tiring being a pessimist. Or, or as, I, as I like to call it, a realist. Play, damn it. So you can chop wood. Again, another thrilling activity you can do in video games. You can play, I want to say dominoes, because they look like dominoes, but they look like odd dominoes. But I'm just going to assume it's dominoes. So there's that. that. That looks cool. And we got, was it Five Finger Fillet? Five Finger Fillet? It was boring in Red Dead Redemption 1, and I think it's going to be boring in this. And it looks like the exact same animation when he cuts himself. I mean, again, I might be wrong. Maybe I'm misremembering, but it looks like the exact same animation. It's like, come on. God, there are count um, yeah, I'm probably misremembering it. It's probably slightly different, but yeah. Oh yeah, I can do this. No thanks. The secrets to uncover and people to meet. See, this looks like a random strangers and freaks scenario. That's cool. Yeah, I've heard that they've they've updated the combat greatly, which is good because the combat, like, as in hand to hand, obviously. Not the gun combat. Because the hand-to-hand -hand in GTA and the and Red Dead Redemption, you know, pretty basic. You know, you've got your, like, counter and dodge and all that bullshit. But it's all kind of clumsy and weird. So, hopefully, hopefully they've made the hand-to-hand -hand combat pretty good in this game. Although, they're probably going to have a mission or two, like this looks like. They're probably going to have a mission or two where they're like, Hey, we're going to force you to get into hand-to-hand -hand combat because we put a good hand-to-hand -hand combat system in the game and we know most people aren't just going to go around beating people up when you have guns so we're going to force people to try out the new system i'm not saying that's a bad thing i'm just saying that's probably what's going to happen but yeah take that i like this i like i mean that that that'll probably be a thing where you go there once and then you're like okay never again kind of like when you go to the cinema in GTA 5. Or go to see a show in first red Dead redemption hey it's an okay way to pass the time i guess chase down bound Chase down bounties. Yeah, that was good. I like doing bounties. Dead or alive? Alive. Obviously. Shoot him in the leg. Lasso. Alive. Fight a duel. Boom! A lot more. Be careful out there. This is nasty country. He turns around and goes, but I've, but I've got dead eye. So, I don't, I am the danger. I knock. All that business. Current references. This is cool as well. I like this. It's like, they will remember your actions. So if you're nice to people, they'll they'll be like, hey, he's a good guy. And then if you're not nice to people, they'll be like, stay away from him, Timmy. You know. So it's going to be interesting to see whether or not that will actually have a meaningful impact in the game. Or, or if it's just one of those surface level things where they're like, like where they say, oh, oh, you know, in Skyrim, you know, depending on who you choose to win the war, it changes, it changes the world. And it's like, well, all it does is mean either... Uh, Stormcloak soldiers will be in Whiterun or the Imperial soldiers will be. That's basically the only change that happens when the war ends. Consequences and people will remember you and your actions. Son of a bitch. Dead. Dead. I wonder if they're going to let you kill kids in this game. Of course they won't because for some reason developers are like, look. Look, you can murder anyone you want. You can do what you want. You can run them over in cars. You can torture them. In fact, we're going to put a mission in where you do torture a guy in GT5. You can do all these heinous, horrendous things. Throw sticky bombs into people's cars and blow them up and shit. But no. Can't have you shooting virtual children. No. And Bethesda are like that too. They're like... Except Bethesda are the worst at it because Bethesda are like, I know what we're going to do. We're going to put a load of kids in our game. Like, I don't know, Fallout 3. Where you go to, I don't know, Little Lamplight. And they put all these little kids in there and they're like, okay, we're going to make the kids unkillable. And then we're going to make them really annoying little shits. Like, we're going to make you want to kill them just because you can't. So there's that Mayor McCready 
And he's a fucking annoying little shit, but you can't kill him because Bethesda's like, no, that is too far. I mean, you can you can literally enslave people in this game and sell them and then murder them after they've been sold. That's fine. But killing snot those little punks? No, that's that's too far. It pisses me off. And this game's going to be the same, isn't it? I bet you only see kids in cutscenes. I bet there's no kids out in the wild. I've just got a... It's like, it's like I've got a thing about killing children. No, it's not that. It's just like... It's all fake. You do horrible, horrible, horrible things in video games all the time. Why is there suddenly like... No, there's a line. You can't cross it. That's too far. It's like... I've done game. I've done stuff in games far worse than kill children. There, are, there have been games where I have killed children. It can be done. So it's not like there's a law against putting that in your game. I've done things far worse than killing children in video games. I've committed genocide in God knows how many games. You know, but no, can't, can't, can't hit a child that that smack talks you when you're wearing your Daedric armor with a fiery Daedric greatsword, and this kid just goes, "Huh, I thought adventurers were supposed to be tough." Dead. No, they won't let you. Pisses me off. So there's that. <laughs> An insight into the mind of me. So yeah, first person, beautiful. Now, see, that looked like the aiming was way better than it is on the first person on GTA 5 because it just went you and then you. And it, it looked, the movement looked too slow for it to be like locking on and then snapping to the next target. So it looked like that was just aiming and they might have been using a mouse, who knows. But that looked pretty good. The aiming, I mean, the it was the first person in GTA Five was such an afterthought because it wasn't in the original version. It was only in the next gen version, and it was it, it actually sold the game for me because I wasn't going to get it because I was like, I've played GTA for a year. None of my friends are going to buy the new version. I don't think I'll bother. And then they went, Yo, first person GTA, and I was like, I've wanted first person GTA since nineteen ninety seven. Sold. So like and it, it wasn't polished and the game is the game's fun in first person don't get me wrong driving the cars is less fun because they don't put when you're driving cars in gta they put this vi this visual effect on that sort of stretches everything when you get to high speeds it makes you seem like you're going faster than you are that's why when you get when you're driving your car and it seems all fast and then you let your friend drive and you get in the passenger seat it doesn't seem like it's going as fast because only the driver has that effect and when you're in first person that effect doesn't come into play so it always seems slower in first person in gta and that used to bug me but in general the first person just isn't like if i need to take something seriously when i'm playing gta i'll go third person if, if, if i'm just being casual and having a bit of fun first person um so hopefully I still think third person is probably going to be the primary mode of play, but it is nice that they put first person in here. And who knows? Well, I know it won't happen, but we I, I can dream. I can I can do a, I can do something I almost never do and get my hopes up. Maybe they'll incorporate a VR mode into it. Who knows? They won't. They wouldn't dare, would they? They wouldn't dare put a VR mode into Red Dead Redemption 2, but if they did, I would use it. So there's that. Come on, what's next? Yeah, so we've got the old first person view. Yeah, capping those guys. I like the old, I, I'm I'm a fan of kicking a door in in a video game. I like it. Yeah, see like that looks so scripted because I don't unless unless they've got moves programmed into characters where they where they'll be triggered in the very rare instances that when a NPC goes through a door. There's an enemy on either side, and then they trigger that animation. So that seemed like a, a like a like a scripted thing. <sighs> Don't believe everything you see. Or taking the world with new there's that there's that beautiful snow trail again. Beautiful. Out of cameras for some stunning views. Yeah, people love people. That look that looks like it's from Infinity Blade Three, a game none of you know what it is, do you? None of you know what Infinity Blade Three is. Shame. Because the first uh, Infinity Blades 1, 2, and 3 were mobile phone games. And they were like the cream of the crap. They were they were great. Then they never made any more. Shame. The result is a world that is deep. So yeah, we've got wolves. Okay. Shotgun. Dead, dead, dead. Yeah, there we go. This world has its consolation. <laughs> so there we go. Red Dead Redemption 2. October 26th. Um... Like I said, I don't think I'm any more hyped than I was before I saw that trailer. Although I like, it's got, it's given me more to think about now. Like I've got I've got more questions now. Um, but again, I'm not going to be going scouring videos that go frame by frame. I'm just going to wait till the game's out, walk to well, 
go to a game shop, pick up a copy and go home and then play it. And ordinarily I would book the week off work as I did when I got Skyrim and for the first time and GTA 5 for the first time. Um, but I won't be booking a week off for Red Dead Redemption 2. Not because I don't want to. I do want to, but it's going to be real busy at work and I would rather not take that week off. So I will definitely be live streaming Red Dead Redemption 2. Because when, when Red Dead Redemption 1 came out and GTA 5, I wasn't live streaming. I tried to do a Let's Play of GTA 5, but I couldn't play the game and make the videos fast enough. It took ages to render the videos, and while it's rendering, I can't record the gameplay. So it took me so long to get through the story, because I was doing that stupid Let's Play that no one gave a shit about anyway. So, yeah, this time I will live stream it. And there's that. So if I hit this and then do that, excellent. Man, I hope that uh, picked up the, the rest of the background and wasn't just this camera for the whole video. Uh, so yeah, I've rambled on long enough. I will say uh, thanks for watching, and as always, peace. And chicken grease.